okay hmm. let's see yesterday's thing whatever we were discussing So action status chapkunto namnena. The action status will be used to uh, show a, a response time or to show some message whenever the processing is going on. Uh, so in this example, I think this is the the one. So, when we click on the data, a lot of data is processing. We uh, click on the data, but the data is ready, but, study, but uh, it will take more time. So, we can wait until it displays. But the user will not know whether the data is coming or not. You see, now data is displayed. So, meanwhile, we can display uh, a message saying that uh, uh, the data is, uh, our request is processing. So, it will take some time. Please wait. So otherwise we can display the uh, button i mean disable the button uh, meanwhile uh, data uh, response is coming otherwise uh, just show a message so for that we were working here so first of all we have to declare the status uh, just like that status tag is there action status so for this starting text will be there and the stop text will be there so by default stop text will be uh, displayed and whenever you click i mean process will start then start uh, text will be appears okay uh, and the styles also we can put uh, for the start text and the stop text as well so uh, style and just showing the red and the font is uh, having increased to 20 pixels and this id will be used to uh, like a display the or render the status whenever any action is doing suppose here, here is a command button so if i click on the button then i wanted to show the status then uh, this id will be used here so not only here uh, action support action function and any uh, any uh, html buttons also whenever you click uh, then the status id uh, id of the action status you can use to render the status but as of now it's not displaying why it's because of uh, command button uh, whenever uh, this command button actually will submit the entire form and refresh the entire form instead of that you can re-render particular block if you re-render only this block I mean it will not refresh this entire form instead of that just re-render re only a block okay so before that what it will happen is whenever you click action status will be loaded but immediately it will disappear because it refreshes the entire form or entire page so instead of that what i am doing is don't refresh this entire form just refresh a particular block wherever you wanted to display the data but not this action status so what was happened is whenever you uh, click on this command button it will refresh entire thing it will loads but it disappears now you can see just refresh and whenever you click status will appear processing the request please wait so once re response is displayed in the page that will disappear Let's wait until it displays. Yeah. So data is displayed and there is no state status is displaying now, it is disappeared. Um now let us see view state whether it is showing okay. 
so you know the variable we have declared is a transient variable so that will not form a view state so only the the variable it is not showing let us declare one more one more variable just for uh, just for showing you a uh, view state variable like variables how how much it is uh, taking like if i declare any variable here <coughs> let me declare some variable like a public string not available just user id will be available static uh, static see this is a static method and the variables inside you want it to access should be at uh, static variables actually so let me display this username in the visual force page it is a static let's see whether it is showing you you know static and static variables and the transient variables will not transform into the uh, a view state so hence it is not showing in the uh, view state in this view state generally you can see in the controller side here so you will see the variables which are occupying the view state since the variables we have declared is a static as well as one is a transient and one is a static those are not uh, transforming through the view state what I can do is let me not declare as a static ok now refresh this you see here username is a variable if uh, as soon as a, a constructor is loading then it is uh, forming the view state so once you submit also you can see the view state so to render or to display in the page it has to uh, uh, transform a, a visible force page uh, tags into the HTML tags uh, whether it is a data or whether it is a simple text uh, or more data also it will it will take say, some space so that is called as a view state here so you can see the username is storing the value and it is the size is 0 0.18 KB
let us wait for the yeah same it is same uh, so earlier before we haven't used the transient variable so it was throwing you the uh, the exception saying that a view state is exceeded so let us see if you wanted to see the this variable also in the view state let us limit the records let us uh, limit uh, records to 500 but we will not use a transient variable so this variable also you can see now in the visual force page view state okay come here hmm. because it's a static method hmm. let us display we are displaying now only 500 records uh, you can see now so this is a string variable directly it is showing but it is a list having more records so it is it is having a separate folder for this for this you can see how much it is occupying 3.55 kb okay i have restricted the records displaying is only 500 records in the class we have we kept as a limit 500 okay so if there is no limit then it will take more view state and if it is not a static also uh, method is a static otherwise a variable is a static or transient variable then more sp more space it will occupy and it will forms in view state more view state so it's uh, failing the earlier okay so this is how we can control the view state and uh, the action status will be used to uh, show you a, a, a status uh, now we can see if we click on this the uh, message will show you instead of this message you can you can display one uh, uh, image or some uh, uh, yeah it's, it's a kind of image only uh, which will occupy entire page there's a no uh, possibility of clicking this button again so like that also you can uh, you can uh, display the action status image as well as the text you can display okay so this is uh, what about the action status and the view state and now we were yesterday discussing about the limitations in the sales ports so which is uh, read only we are keeping uh, to display more than thousand records in the page and uh, the SQL queries we can write in the one context is 100 SQL queries and the uh, number of records fetching from one SQL query is 50,000 records so if you write a query in the class or in the trigger anywhere if you write a query this will fetch only 50,000 records I mean it will fetch more than that if it is fetching more than 50,000 records then it will throw an error query is fetching more than 50,000 records so it will throw you a, a 5001 rows error so error is nothing error is i mean it's an exception actually it's an exception it's not an error it's an exception so exception will throw you in the page or a class wherever you are executing it will it will say you are fetching more than 50,000 records in the SQL query then it is failing it will fail you like how page is executing whenever we click on the page so if it is exit in the view state it is showing a, 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 a error message right so like that in the finite one SO, SQL exceptions will show you in the page or a class wherever you are doing okay uh, so we have to do a good practice limiting the records to the 50,000 even though there is no if let's say there is only 500 records in the object are based on the query only five uh, 5,000 or below 50,000 records are coming uh, then also you can put a limit 50,000 it's a best practice not to uh, 
not to uh, get an acceptance in the page so uh, suppose in this in a one of the case it is ex uh, exceeding the more than 50,000 records also then it won't throw you any errors so this is a best practice like limiting the 50,000 records generally okay this is one thing and whenever you are doing a DML statements right so fifth one is DML statements only 150 DML statements <coughs> you can issue in one context okay so let's say in this uh, example in this create uh, this is a method in this method I'm inserting 50,000 records so ge generally if I wanted to insert a records in the class or from the class or in the tr from the trigger so what can I do let's say <coughs> account I wanted to insert then I can write like this right So I can set the values like this phone is something okay and fax is something all the field values we can set like this okay all the field values we can set like this anything you can set okay and finally we we'll put a insert so this is a DML statement as we have discussed DML there are few statements insert update upset delete so these are the statements are available either you can insert insert means uh, creating the new record update means modifying the existing record upset means it's a insert plus update if record is inserted already then it will do a update if it is no record is found with the uh, the same value then it will create say a new record delete means it's deleting the record okay these are the operations are available in the DML okay so whenever you, you insert a D uh, you use the insert operation then it will uh, in the Salesforce it will uh, look for the object what is the object you are uh, inserting if you are uh, using a account whatever it is account contact then use the variable that variable you can insert okay uh, so for that variable we are setting the field values so this is ACC is a uh, the variable for the account it's an instantiation variable so for that uh, field values you can set okay this is a single record insertion so only one record will be inserted if I wanted to dis uh, insert uh, two records three records like this so I have to do so here instances will be different ACC one or two we can put two to 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 like this we have to put and next this is a third record for this record we should not use the same instance variable which is already declared here ACC is already declared we should not use this so we have to declare a new variable ACC3 ACC3 like this okay see this is a not a a a optimized code so if I wanted to insert a 500 record 1000 records I should not do like this instead of that what we are doing we can do a for loop for 500 times okay integer okay i equals to 0 i less than 500 i plus plus okay so if I put this inside the for loop this code will execute 500 times okay and 500 records will be inserted but there is a limitation so if I do a 500 times what uh, this will do 500 times insert 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 will do see we have we can do only if 150 DMS statements in a sales force only 150 DMS statements so here it is executing more than 150 that means it is almost a 500 right so it is a it is uh, uh, reaching the limit and it will throw you an error instead of issuing the inside the for loop you just add it to the list 
all the things just put a list okay so e list ni e list lo ki manam add chesukochu anamata elements anni okay tarvata insert chese tappudu ikkada global insert cheyakondi outside insert chesthe but acc anedi insert cheyakoddu ippudu ACC అనేది ఈ ఫర్ లూప్ లోపల మాత్రమే అవైలబుల్లో ఉంది అవుట్ సైడ్ ఫర్ లూప్ అవైలబుల్లో ఉండదు మరి అవుట్ సైడ్ ఫర్ లూప్లో నేను ఇన్సర్ట్ చేయాలంటే ఎలా చేయాలంటే ఈ లిస్ట్లో కొన్ని ఎలిమెంట్స్ యాడ్ చేస్తున్నాను కాబట్టి ఈ లిస్ట్ని ఇన్సర్ట్ చేస్తే సరిపోతుంది దిస్ ఈస్ ఎ లిస్ట్ విచ్ హోల్డ్స్ ఆల్ ద ఫైవ్ హండ్రెడ్ ఏసీసీ ఇన్స్టెన్సెస్ ఫస్ట్ టైం ఇట్ విల్ కమ్ అండ్ ఇట్ విల్ యాడ్ ఇన్ టు ద లిస్ట్ సెకండ్ టైమ్ థర్డ్ టైమ్ లైక్ దట్ ఫైవ్ హండ్రెడ్ టైమ్స్ దిస్ రికార్డ్స్ విల్ బీ ఇన్సర్టెడ్ ఇన్ ఎ వన్ లిస్ట్ this one list i am inserting the outside so for 500 records you are insert issuing you only one insert statement okay like this we can uh, overcome the limitations so only generally only 150 dms statements you can issue uh, so how can we how can we optimize instead of uh, uh, like a earlier method we can do if you do like this then you can utilize the resources properly okay let's say this met uh, in this class whenever this method executes only one dml statement executes let's say you are calling one more class the other class is there you are calling here so that is also having one uh, one or tw 10 or 20 dml statements that class is calling one more class that is having a 30 40 like that in a one execution so you can execute only 150 dml statements okay it can be in a one class it can be in a multiple classes only one dms statement can be sorry 150 dms statements can be issued okay next one is dml rows limit dml rows to process is 10000 that means so SOKL query, one SOKL query is giving you a 50,000 records. Just like that, one DML statement, this insert statement, one DML statement can insert 10,000 records at a time. Suppose you are, instead of 500, you are repeating to 20,000. Okay, 20,000 records you are repeating. okay um, if you are repeating this one to 20,000 records what will happen is 20,000 records will repeat and it will add in the list whenever you insert the DML statement it will try to insert a 20,000 records at a time but a, a limit is only 10,000 records at a time you can insert by using a DML statement this dml statement either it is a update delete anything suppose you wanted to delete a 50000 records at a time it's not possible in the normal sql query so 50000 records it will fetch but whenever you delete do a delete operation it will try to look for only 10000 records only 10000 records it will delete or 10000 records it will update or 10000 records it will insert only 10000 records is possible with a with a dml statement so you have to limit here instead of uh, looping to 20,000 you just loop to 10,000 so just like this this is one of the limitation you can insert only 10,000 records or rows rows and records and rundo kate okay dml statements any records in the process just say any interview question I like just 10,000 jepal manam okay that is the limit so we are different uh, limitations in iron mata so ade vidhanga manaki number of fields we can create generally you say 500 but as per the uh, as uh, your license uh, and uh, your organization and uh, edition matters suppose you are enterprise edition you can pay the uh, you can increase it by uh, requesting the sales force by default is 500 you can increase it okay number of fields to create and uh, number of workflows 
you can create 500 but only 50 can be active only 50 can be active <coughs> I think it's not 5 to 500 it is a 200 um, I'm not sure hey this this how can I move this mouse so if something it is coming only 50 can be only 50 can be active so if I wanted to type something here it is small something is there Mm, so these are the limitations and uh, there are few limitations also like uh, uh, 25 relationship fields you can use uh, sorry not 25 it's a 40 lookup fields you can create and two master look master detail relationships you can create on one object so let's say a object is there b object is there, and c object is there uh, a is uh, parent for b and c uh, then a is already having a two relationships so it cannot be a, a master object for the third object or from one object you can create only a two a master detail relationships but you can create more than two uh, in a lookup relationships okay and uh, form the fields also 20 you can create or 25 I guess 25 you can create and uh, and uh, mm, what is there and roll up summary roll up summary fields also I guess it's a 25 and uh, yeah these are the limitations are available and uh, yeah there is a field tracking field tracking history field history tracking thing so what is a field history tracking means you can enable a uh, field tracking for the fields like uh, if anybody is changing the value let's say name is you are changing so our uh, account number or phone number you are changing uh, so initially phone number is something and you somebody came and ch modified then you wanted to track who modified and what modified and things you can mod uh, and what is the date and all you can uh, you wanted to see then you have to enable the field history tracking on the field okay those fields you can set only 20 so let's say I have an account so let's say if you open any account so uh, let's say phone somebody is changed phone you wanted to see who is changed and what is changed so then what you can do is you can go to the fields you can set history tracking first enable and then you can see the fields here let's say phone number so here is phone is available if you set this and save then this field will be enabled for the tracking that means if anybody changes If anybody changes and saves uh, there is actually we have to uh, put a, a related list for this uh, if you if you enable then automatically it will not show you in the page in the page layout edit the page layout 
in the page layout you can see the related list in this related list uh, phone history should be there phone it's there Bro, account history pet the uh, account history yes yes account history let's put here and save mm, you can see here the field is changed from this to this okay like that if anybody user are changing then they can see here okay user who changed and what is the action okay and date also you can see so this uh, only 20 fields you can set the history okay uh, okay these are the limitations and uh, action tags we have already completed action support action function action region and action polar um, now let's say you wanted to overcome the limitations you wanted to delete more than 50,000 records you wanted to insert more than 10,000 records so how it is possible uh, let's say in this case only I wanted to insert more than 10,000 records <coughs> okay so if you wanted to insert more than 10,000 records in the normal apex it is not possible it will throw you an error because the email statements can insert only 10,000 records okay then how can you overcome it? There is a batch class or batch apex. Okay. So, what can we do with the batch class? And so, batch class will process the records in the size of two hundred by default. So, whatever the request you are doing will be processed as a 200 200 batches so if you are processing 10,000 records it will divide a 20 20 uh, 200 200 200 like that okay however how many records are there uh, so whatever it is but it will dis divide into 200 but you wanted to process more than that 2000 records it will you can increase the batch size okay so by using a batch class uh, the you can uh, you can process a uh, bulk records actually it's a kind of a bulk okay you can overcome the limitations whichever is there uh, let's say I wanted to fetch more than 50,000 records okay and I wanted to update those records 50,000 records in normal apex if you write it will throw an error because only at a time you can display or you can or you can uh, process only 10,000 records in the DML so now more than 50 I can uh, fetch which is not possible in the normal apex and I can update more than 50,000 more than 10,000 records also so this kind of limitations we can overcome with a batch class okay if you wanted to really process more than uh, 50,000 records or you wanted to really update or delete insert more than uh, 10,000 records use the batch apex okay so it's a interface is there to enable a class as a batch class so let's let's write a syntax okay it should be a global variable a global uh, access modifier global class it's a class only but by implementing a database dot batchable it will becomes a batch class so let's say uh, delete transactions batch this is a class name if you implement database dot batchable a subject then it will becomes a batch class okay so what is this implements means there will be a interfaces 
whenever you implement the properties of the batch or properties of the uh, the whatever the API is there will be applicable for the current class if you implement there will be a certain methods inside that you have to uh, you have to implement actually uh, whenever you uh, use the implements then the methods will be in this API we have to implement in the inside the class as well so there are three methods are available in the batch class which is a global uh, let me <coughs> excuse me here start let me write by like this start execute finish these three methods are available but syntaxes we have to write here global means it's a wide global wide execute okay so here provide finish okay and here there is a written type either iteration iterable iterable or database or query locator inside that there are a parameters database dot batchable context so any variable here so I'm going to use say bc batchable context so here also in the execute also <coughs> data base dot batchable context come on the list of records it will expect from the start method it can be a subject or directly you can put a method or type of the records which are generating from the start <coughs> let's say if i'm querying the so what in a start method we can do and what execute method and what finish method will do and a start method low either you can write a database dot iterable or database dot global uh, uh, database dot query locator so it can have a two uh, two types of uh, written types you can use one at a time so if you use a iterable so there are still governor limits will be applicable if you use a query locator governor limits will be bypassed that means so j why we are going for the batch class so batch class we wanted to process more than 50,000 records or we wanted to insert more than 10,000 records we wanted to update or delete more than 10,000 records right so if you uh, this uh, start method will be used to generally query okay and generate the records whatever you wanted to process those records will be passed to the execute method execute method will process the records by dividing the 200 200 200 okay and finish method like you don't have to write inside anything i mean it's a um, it's a we have to implement it it's generally if any process is completed we can send an email or you wanted to call a another batch class you can call <coughs> you can call or you wanted to um fetch a, like how many records are processed how many records are failed like that in finish method you can do but execute method will execute the records by 200 200 dividing by the 200 200 records start method will be used to query so let's say <coughs> when i'm querying uh, if i query for the accounts okay so if I query like this, select ID, name, phone from account. So if I write like this, and if I don't use a query locator, if I use iterab iterable, then this query will have governor limits applicable. Okay. So if you write like this, it will fetch only a fifty thousand records. It will fails more than 50,000 records it, if it is fetching, fetching because iterable 
will have a governor limits applicable but go query lo query locator will not have any limitation it will fetch a 50, 50 million records so 50 million okay million records so in a one in a one application you will not have this much of uh, uh, records to process generally okay even though you can process 50 million records it will fetch 50 million records if you use a query locator if you use a iterable it will fetch only 50 I mean it will fetch more than that but if it is fetching more than 50,000 records it will throws an error so best practice is write a query locator instead of iterable then when can I write a iterable means if you are thinking thinking the records will not exceed more than 50,000 records okay in a query so you are confident about that so records 50,000 can equal raw one tells in up to no first query yes go cut 50,000 records was they marine 50,000 records to give children money but they know query locator water chicken and water to suppose on a query locator card on a good trouble rascal on a pro it should get less than 50,000 records only then batch normally you can uh, the whatever the records are fetching in the start method will goes to the execute method and it will process okay uh, <coughs> so if you are querying for the account then you can write here account so you don't know what kind of data is coming from the start method then you can write a subject a subject okay like this you can write or if you are knowing already what data is coming then uh, here you can put a if suppose you are querying for the accounts and put accounts if you are querying for the contacts then put a contacts if you are not knowing then you can write a subject and you have to uh, inside you have to use account instantiation like that okay <coughs> so start method will be used to here actually we have to return the elements if you use a query locator so you have to return the records return database dot query locator so queries we should not write directly here in the uh, start method it should be a string we have to write a dynamic SQL queries here like this you can write so this is one query now so here I can mention query string so as a string you have to write a query and this string you have to pass into the database dot query locator so this will forms the query and gives you a the result those results will be passed here and these records you can process inside you whatever you wanted to do you wanted to update or you wanted to delete okay so you can do the action here okay this is the batch class so then tax is uh, this one so there are three uh, methods are available start execute and finish in the start method we will write a query and whatever the result is coming will pass it to the execute, <coughs> execute method and finish method <coughs> will be used to uh, SNA confirmation or whatever you want you can write inside that in the finish method you wanted to write uh, anything you can write <coughs> you wanted to send an email or you wanted to execute another batch class like that okay so batch class you're writing the batch class so how can I execute a batch class and so normal class in call just not to then call check <coughs> let's say class a on the yellow let's say public public white method a on the so class yellow method a on the okay so let's say i am writing class b now Class B only. 
so I am writing here the method public class sorry public void D okay so if I write a method here which is doing some action let's say in this method uh, we are inserting a record account record okay so here we are inserting a contact okay so whenever I insert a contact I wanted to reference a class A method class uh, method A and this method A I'm inserting account right this account I wanted to use for the contact then generally what how can we call if I wanted to call a class A method in a class B what we can do is we can instantiate class A new class A we have to instantiate like this okay and the use instantiation variable dot method name so this will executes class A's method generally if I wanted to execute a method in the from the page what we have to do we will write an action action equals to method A and the paste awesome up to page in G met a class one method execute on it but in class in execute challenge how can I then execute is nothing but invoking if I wanted to invoke a method or a, a class method from the page we can write a, in an action action equals to if you write action equals to method a then class a yes method will be executed but if I wanted to invoke the same method from the class <coughs> then we have to call a class like this by instantiating instantiate a class okay and by instantiation variable call the method okay one minute in the case of another control for condo class at the end work on this step the bargain it is something it is on that okay so to call or invoke a, a different method from another class then instantiate a class and call a method otherwise if it is static method <coughs> let's say method a1 is there okay if it is a, if you wanted to make as a static then make a static method a one <coughs> okay so if I wanted to call a this method then directly I can call I don't have to instantiate class a dot method a one then whatever the code inside it will fire automatically the instantiation is not required okay like this I can call but a batch class how can I call I cannot instantiate and do it like I cannot directly instantiate like this we cannot instantiate we don't have to call any execute methods or start method we cannot call okay you cannot call like this then how can I execute my batch class and eh? or, or whatever the methods inside there in the batch class we cannot call as other methods like a, a method a one is calling from the method B by instantiating a class or if it is a static method directly I'm using a class name dot method name okay so but batch class methods you will not call like this you cannot call start execute method man call shalem. no call jail and eh? Class Motan ni call jali then the instantiation bit coach later and there is a method which is database dot execute batch 
okay inside this a new class name you can put like this so this is a way of calling Wh means it's executing so you cannot call this is called as a execution so if you wanted to execute this batch class from the another class or if you wanted to execute from the visual force page visual force page ninja call the anagoda first visual force page ninja class and call the class launch a database that execute method and jpc challenge let's say in the page uh, in this page or in the home shopping page we have a shopping right so in this page uh, let's say sir there is a button uh, delete my transactions so okay the transactions are deleting from the batch class and come up and call jail and a general ga visual force pain in change as the move method call jail and talent of a class and call jail and a e-page is someone in china controller local yes some general control of a controller on today but a batch class and direct the controller we use children clear than matter so on the kanji pc of a first of class ras koli in a class ras koli e class launch e instantiate just calling database dot execute batch yeah let's go to sorry so now batch class is not there batch class is not present in the class so it will throw an error mananga batch class create chale do so you can mother example jep kundu namu so mananga manam batch class lathe kabati it will throw an error so so like this in the class if you wanted to call a batch class then you have to use a database that execute batch so which will execute the batch cla batch class okay from the class you can call like this from the trigger also you can call but uh, not recommended to call because what will happen is there are limitations in the batch class so, so while we are talking about the batch class limitations so to ex whenever you execute the batch class the batch class will run in a s asynchronous mode so there are two modes I can say synchronous mode and a synchronous mode okay what is this means synchronous means the actions which will occurs immediately our actions will which is executing the immediately are called a synchronous so asynchronous methods will be executed in a future mode or whenever the uh, resources are available so that means uh, if there are five batch classes uh, are there so five will be in a queue but once first one is executed and second one will execute next one will execute like that asynchronous methods or mode will be executed in a future mode synchronous will be in a immediate actions okay so batch class is asynchronous mode and trigger we can call from the trigger batch class can be called from the trigger but with a care what is a care here means so in a batch class only five batch classes we can uh, batch classes can be processed at a time and 100 will be in a queue <coughs> so if you submit uh, in a batch let's say trigger we are writing trigger we haven't discussed it if you are writing a trigger inside the trigger 
so let's say you missed uh, bulkification okay uh, bulkification you have missed that means let's say a data loader is inserting some 10,000 records or let's say 500 records only if you are inserting a 500 records through data loader through class triggers also will fire this triggers <coughs> will execute a batch class so if 200 records are there or 500 records are coming then 500 times batch will be called but we can we can put a only 100 classes in a queue or we can execute at a, at a time 100 only so there may be a chances of failing the batch classes so we c by taking the care we can call the batch classes so in the question they will ask you so batch and trigger are different uh, modes batch is a synchronous mode and sorry batch is asynchronous mode and trigger is a uh, synchronous so can we call a synchronous uh, uh, can we call a asynchronous class from the synchronous center yes we can call but we have to take care uh, like trigger will execute immediately but batch class will execute uh, after some time so we have to make sure that we should not uh, put a, a more batch jobs in a queue so in a queue only 100 can be possible if you are submitting more than 100 it will throw or trigger may fail not batch class trigger will fail first so in the country 100 batch class already processing loan I already queue loan I so money next time trigger fair in a plan in just a the money batch in a money invoke just as a matter of day mother the already 100 on I cover the batch class cock on the first trigger a fail a put other than matter so trigger fail in a pro trigger loan a code on the fail a mana class learning sorry go work cock for on chance on the matter so before executing we can check so before execute so if uh, there is a batch classes in a queue if these batch classes are there then execute only this much and not pet coach and what okay okay um this is about the batch class uh, syntax we will uh, we will write in a class tomorrow and we will execute a batch can we will schedule a batch tomorrow class okay this is a uh, <coughs> theory part and we will just uh, delete the records uh, transaction record from the batch class and we can uh, put a batch size 2000 records at uh, 500 records uh, so that 500 500 records it will execute at a time okay